We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in to one of ACC's messages. As you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're on social media, use the hashtag you belong at ACC if God taught you anything during this message. We want to get to know you. So check out our online community by watching our live service at arundelcc.org live. This is where you can interact with other viewers in the chat, fill out a prayer request, and follow along with message notes. And we believe that God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. Good morning, church. Hey, my name is Mike Miller. If we have never had a chance to meet, I'd love to meet you today. I'm one of the pastors here, and uh, I'm ready and excited for today's message. Before we jump into all that, I want to point out a couple things. They mentioned it on there, but we have that merch wall out front. I'm excited about that. Are y'all excited about representing your church in the community? I'm going to be repping the ACC hat while we're in Nicaragua this week, and so I'm, I'm really excited about that opening up. Also, if you didn't notice, because you're probably just as of as observant as me. If you did not notice, there is a new playground outside. We've been waiting on that for a while, right? Hey, parents, we just ask that you make sure that when your kids are out there, you don't let them go out by themselves uh, and make sure there's an adult that you trust or yourself with them uh, for the safety of your, your own kids. My daughter had a really good time with a few other kids uh, earlier this week. They were sliding, and I mean, that thing goes fast. It hasn't had time to wear down yet because it's brand new. And they were like shoo, zipping through. It was, it was pretty fun to watch. Uh, but we are in part three of a series called Unshakables. And I, I get to talk about one of my favorite topics uh, or my favorite people, I should say, uh, today. And, and so if you have your Bibles, go ahead and take your Bibles and turn with me to Acts chapter 2. And just hold your spot there. If you don't own a Bible, we'd love for everyone to have a copy of the Word of God. There's a Bible in the seat back in front of you. Feel free to grab that, write your name in it, and take it and call it yours. We want you to have a copy of the Word of God. So, uh, how many of you have ever used the statement, well, we can agree to disagree? Ever use that? I, you know, I'm, I've always despised that statement. I don't like it. I, I'm not a huge fan of conflict, but at the same time, I enjoy some healthy conflict. I think it's good for, for your soul, for, for your mind, and, for, you know. I think it's a good thing to have on occasion. Um, at the same time, I will never apologize for God, for Jesus, or the Holy Spirit. And so today we are going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. Now remember, there are areas of your faith, Pastor Matt talked about this the past couple weeks, there's areas of your faith where we need to be completely unified in. If the Bible says it, then we believe it, and we're going to talk about it. That's the, that's the concept there. There are some things that are non-essentials, we can, dis we can disagree with those things, uh, but these areas that we are talking about during this Unshakables series are essentials. They are things that we have to be unified on. So each week so far, we have read something from our position papers called the Big Idea Statement. We're going to read it together pretty soon, uh, but you know, I, wanna, I want us to read it out loud together because, you know, if you're anything like me, you ever drive somewhere, somewhere that you've never driven before or you're, not just, you're just not familiar with? with it, and so you turn the, uh, the volume down so you can see better, <laughs> trying to make turns and stuff. It's kind of a similar thing. I think that whenever we read out loud, uh, it, it allows you to kind of turn up the volume of your own voice to cut the distractions of everything else. You know, like I, I tend to read, uh, I read a lot, and there's, there's been times I've noticed where I'll sit there and read a sentence, a paragraph, a whole page. I've even read a whole book before, and someone was like, hey, what's that book about? And I'm like, well, I mean, I could tell you the title <laughs> because my thoughts get so crazy. They go all over the place and next thing you know, I'm sitting there reading and don't realize any. I'm just reading the words. It's not sticking. So we're going to read it out loud together so it sticks a little bit more. Uh, but before we get in, I'm going to tell you a couple of stories throughout the day. Uh, I remember years ago, I was at a Rundle Mills mall with my wife before we moved back to Texas. You ever been to a Rundle Mills during holiday season? It is impossible to park. And uh, I remember we were driving lane after lane after lane looking for parking, and then we hit that one lane, the one that you're like, oh, there's a car waiting on this side, and there's a car waiting coming the other way. And the two cars that were, you know, parked already, it seemed like they were trying to watch a Netflix movie, movie or something. It, they took forever to leave their parking spots. So we sat there and sat there and sat there, and uh, there was a guy behind me that was clearly not okay with waiting, and... Uh, I'll, I'll give you this, I'll preface this, the rest of the story by saying, 
when I was younger, back in the day, I had some anger problems. And uh, this guy decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to anger this guy. <laughs> so he starts cussing at me, yelling through his window, honking his horn. You know, my window's down. And I'm just like, what is this guy's deal? And, you know, being from Texas, I was like, you know what? I should get out. <laughs> and I should, I should engage this guy. But before I did that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to pray for the Holy Spirit to help me. So I said, under my breath, I said, Holy Spirit, guide me right now, please. Whew, guide me. <laughs> And so this guy gets out instead, and he starts walking towards the window, and he's yelling at me. And I'm like, ooh, Jesus, you better help me. And as he's cussing me out, I just, I simply say, hey, man, look, there's cars in front of us. What do you expect me to do? And he kept cussing me out, and so I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this a little different. I'm going to go a little, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what happens here. <laughs> and so I said, brother, you need Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And as I said, in the name of Jesus, this guy's eyes got as big as watermelons, and he, like, he ran back, and he kept his eyes on me the whole time, and he left so fast. I tell you that story to tell you, there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power when you speak the name of Jesus, when you call on the Holy Spirit, there is power, and, and, and we have the Holy Spirit in us if you believe Christ and, and you believe that Jesus is the Savior of your life, that, and then you have the Holy Spirit to help you and to guide you and to walk you through your life and every situation of your life. So let's read this big idea statement out loud together. It says, the Holy Spirit provides every Christian with the guidance to do what is right and live fully as God originally designed. The Holy Spirit renews and indwells us Coming the source of power, assurance, strength, wisdom, and gifting for building up the church. People in a saving relationship with Jesus Christ are to live in holiness and obedience as they submit to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we get to be in your presence on a day like today. Uh, every day, God, we thank you for your spirit, for, for guiding us, for living with us, for uh, protecting us and giving us strength. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would meet us here, that you would transform us from the inside out. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. All right, well, uh, I'm going to start off this message by telling you this, a little bit about the Holy Spirit. Depending on what uh, church denomination that you may have came from, you know, I, I was raised in a Christian household. I was raised as, as uh, my parents were in ministry, and I was in one of those churches that usually would call the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost. Anyone else? And so you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, same person. And I say person on purpose. Uh, but the, the Holy Spirit is part of what we call the Trinity. And so the Trinity is what? It's God, the Son, or Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, right? They're three in one. They are three. They're also one. And Chris Tomlin would say in his song, they are three in one. So... How many of you have ever been in the, in the middle of the night, you just could not sleep like me? I have that problem all, pretty often. So I, whenever I had cable, I used to wake up, turn on the TV, and inevitably, it always happened. There was always that commercial that is on, uh, and you're sitting there, they're trying to sell you something. You ever seen those sales commercials in the middle of the night? They're so repetitive, right? They're just nonstop. And you're sitting there going, ah, this is, there's nothing else to watch. I guess I'll just watch this guy talk. And uh, so you're listening to this sales pitch, and you're, you're not really buying it. You're like, that's a cool product. That's really cool. I don't need it, but that's cool. And then they do what they hit you with the, but wait, there's more. <laughs> and now you're like, oh, it's really cool. I got to have it. <laughs> so next thing you know, you got three sham wows at your doorstep, <laughs> right? And you're really surprised, but you're really not. Uh, listen, when, when you believe in your heart that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life, a lot of times we forget that because of Jesus, we have direct access to God the Father. We receive the Holy Spirit. And I'll tell you this, when you realize it and you, receive, and, and you remember this, it's better than that, but wait, there's more moment. It's better than that. It's better than that three for the price of one deal, you know, it, in Acts 2, there was a really cool, but wait, there's more, more moment that I love to talk about. It says this in Acts 2, verses 1. On the day of Pentecost, now a lot of people don't realize what Pentecost means. 
Have you ever wondered when you're reading Acts or you hear it in church and stuff? Pentecost uh, means, it's translated to 50. It just means 50. There's no real meaning to it other than it's 50 days after the Passover. And so it just means 50, but it says, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they are sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So all the Christians were gathered together 50 days after the Passover, and the Holy Spirit was like, what? But wait, there's more. The Holy Spirit was like, you've heard about God. You know about Jesus. Maybe some of y'all met him. But wait, there's more. Don't forget about me. So I want to tell you some things about the Holy Spirit today and how he can change your life if you pay attention to the but wait, there's more moment. So point number one, if you're taking notes or if you have your note sheet with you, point number one is that the Holy Spirit guides. The Holy Spirit guides us. In John 14, 15 through 17, it says, If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will leave you, uh, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Now, the amplified version of the Bible uh, calls him the helper and not the advocate. And then it goes on to explain to you who this helper is. It explains, it describes him as comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby. So I'm going to tell you another story real quick. Uh, I had to get permission from my wife to tell this story. Uh, In fact, I asked her for like a whole day, like several times, and she just kept giving me the silent treatment. And so eventually I was like, so the story? And she was like, go ahead. So I got permission Um, but there was this time years ago when Michelle and I were just friends and, uh, you know, I had, I had a long day. I remember I was, I was at work all day and it was kind of a stressful day. And I was on this mission at the time to woo her. She was really into me. She really was. (laughs) She, she, either that or she was using me. I don't know. You can determine that. But she called me up, and I was on my way at this point. I was stuck in traffic on Route 2 at 5-something. You know how bad that is. I was on my way to night classes or evening classes at AACC. And I remember being in traffic, and she called me, and I was like, ooh, she's calling. So I was talking to her, and uh, she goes, hey, there's this comforter at Annapolis Mall that I really like. It's at Macy's or something. There's only one. Now, I know what you're thinking. At the time, online, they didn't use you know, 10, 15 years ago, they didn't used to tell you how many were in stock. But she knew there was only one somehow. And I was like, that's fishy. But okay, there's only one in stock, all right. I said, you know what, so I'll, go, I'll go get it for you. And she was like, no, you don't have to do that. She was, I was like, okay, you go get it. She goes, well, I don't have the money for it. <laughs> I said, all right, well, I'll go get it for you. She goes, no, 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 you have to be in class. Just go to school. I said, all right, well, I'm going to go, we, we, 10, 15 minutes, we went back and forth. I was still stuck in traffic, so we just kept going back and forth with it. And so uh, at the end of it, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go to class. You can't make up your mind, I was thinking in my head. You can't make up your mind, I'm just going to go to class. And then, of course, you know, I've got to be the hero, I'm a man. So I, I drive up to AACC and I'm about to turn in, and I was like, you know what, forget this. And I passed the school, drove to Annapolis, and I got her that comforter. I found it. And I bought it for her. Now, I couldn't pay my truck payment I, after that. Comforters are expensive. I was young. I didn't make a lot of money. But it worked. She married me. I mean, right? Jamie Foxx would say, if you, no, if you don't know that song, I won't say it. Okay. I'm, I've told that story to a, a number of friends over time, just in good fun. And... Uh, you know, later on in life, when we finally got married, she would bring home these comforters, and I was always thinking about that comforter when she'd bring them home, and she'd put them on the bed, make the bed look all magazine photo ready, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. It looks comfortable, so I go to lay in it, and she's like, nope, you got to pull it back. I'm like, say what? I, I did not know that a comforter is only supposed to look comfortable. <laughs> You're not allowed to feel the comfort of a comforter. But I want to tell you, it's not the case for our comforter, the Holy Spirit. He's not just for looks, he's for use. He is 
so tangible. He is tangible in so many, you can feel him and experience him. He's ready to guide you. He's ready to advocate for you. He's ready to comfort you and help you. Listen, we live in a world that is so fast-paced. It changes daily. I mean, if you just watch the social media news, if there's any real you know, truth to it at all, which there's not a lot of times, you know. But the world is changing daily. There is, the culture is changing daily. I mean, they are constantly adding more and more letters to the alphabet army. They are constantly adding more options under gender. They're constantly, I mean, there's just so, it's just so chaotic. There's, but the truth, the truth of what the, wor- what the world calls is true, it's so skewed. They have to use lies and manipulations and, and uh, offenses and all kinds of stuff just to get people to buy in. But the fact of the matter is, is that the, the only truth is what we have here, the absolute truth is what we have here in the Word of God, not what the world says is true. But because of the way this world is, we need the Holy Spirit to help us navigate through all of that, and that's what the Holy Spirit's for. The Holy Spirit won't ever guide you towards anything that is wrong. I mean, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of truth. In John 16, verses 12 and 13, it says, There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. The Holy Spirit guides you into truth. He guides you towards, he won't guide you towards anything other than absolute truth, what comes from God. Not what the world paints as true, but what God created to be true. Now, some of you might be thinking, the end of the verse that you just read, I'd love to know about the future. I'd love to be able to tell the future. I'd love to know maybe like the winning lottery numbers or something, right? I tell you, I, I tell people all the time, I'm going to win the lottery someday. Now, the problem is, is I never play the lottery. I don't know how to buy a ticket. I've never bought one. So probably, it's probably why I haven't won yet. But I, I'm not suggesting the Bible's going to tell you uh, things that are happening or, or going to help you predict the future or not going to say that the Bible is going to uh, tell you winning lottery numbers or anything like that. But what I am saying uh, is that the Holy Spirit, if you ask the Holy Spirit to guide you and you listen to his leading, you will find your life and your situations a lot easier to navigate. Now, don't get me wrong. I didn't say your life would be easier because You're a believer. You're a Christian. If you are a Christian, the Bible says, if you follow him, you're going to be persecuted. But the things that you come up against in your life, when you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, they will be easier to navigate because you'll have a roadmap in front of you. Now, the Holy Spirit also renews and indwells. That's point number two today. He renews us and he indwells us. Romans 12, 2 in the Amplified Version, it says, And do not be conformed to this world any longer, with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan uh, and purpose for you. This scripture is one of those scriptures that I, for a long time, was like, man, it's just that typical cliche verse that everyone's going to use. I mean, I felt like every time I was at church, I heard it. I felt like every youth camp I went to, I heard it. I felt like every time we had a guest speaker, they're going to say this scripture no matter what. I mean, I I grew up in a Christian home, so that was, you know, every time I did something wrong, I heard that scripture quoted to me. You know, it was just one of those things. But when you really think about it, it's so foundational to our faith. I think we should be saying it out loud in our own homes on a daily basis or very often at the very least. I mean, it's something that we, we are supposed to be renewing our mind daily, constantly. I love that it starts with this word. Don't, it says, don't be conformed. And whenever I read this scripture now, I, I tend to break that word down even more. I like to break the word down, conformed down and say it like this. Don't comply or be formed by the standards of the world. Because when you comply with the world, you're saying, I agree. You're saying your truth is true, not God your truth. Whenever you allow the world, uh, the world is trying to form you into something. The world is trying to get a hold of your heart and your mind and, and get you to follow what it says to be true. And that, 
you know, you can't allow the world to, to form your, your worldview at all. Then it goes on to say transformed and progressively. Now, progressively means what? It means that it takes time. It's, it happens little by little. The renewing of your mind happens little by little. And all of it requires the Holy Spirit. It requires the, the Holy Spirit actively working in your life. And there's no way that you can renew your mind on your own. So you might be thinking, what does it mean to renew your mind? I'll give you some examples. It means that you spend intentional time reading and studying the Word. You spend intentional time uh, meditating on it and praying. You spend time changing your thought process. You ensure that you are asking the Holy Spirit to help you with those things that are in your life, to help you respond to people and not react to people like the guy in the parking lot. It means that you take time to, to not let your to be intentional about not letting your offenses linger within you. You work on your weaknesses. You talk to yourself and remind yourself who and whose you are, and you speak God's truths and promise over your life. Notice I said God's truths. Listen, the Holy Spirit's involved with every one of those things because when you accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, the Holy Spirit permanently li- he, he lives in you. He indwells you. Scripture teaches in Romans 8, 9, that he indwells the hearts of the lives of believers. The Holy Spirit will speak to you during those times of intentionality. He will guide you. He'll comfort you. He'll walk with you as you learn your identity in Christ. Now, some of you may be sitting here going, I, I don't know who I am. I'm struggling with my identity. It's really hard when everything around you is so fast-paced and chaotic. Sometimes it can be really hard. It's, now, I mean, it's really hard to stay healthy mentally, and, and oftentimes that comes with the question, who am I? What am I even doing? What is my purpose? Well, back in 2020, uh, we had a night of worship here and I spoke briefly on identity in Christ and who God says we are. And I want to tell you this real quick. You are, everything that you are, your identity was already chosen by God. And when we had this night of worship, I remember praying and, and just searching through the Bible about who God says we are. And I picked some of the things that it says who we are, and we put it up on a screen. We're going to have it right behind me here in a second. And we read it together that night. And I want to do the same thing here tonight. You don't have to, today, you don't have to stand up or anything like that, but let's read this together. This is who you are. Now, remember, this is who God says you are, who he called you to be. This isn't who the world says you are. This is from God. Let's read this together. I am a child of God, courageous, healed, set apart, worthy, a masterpiece, loved, chosen, anointed, victorious, holy, free, whole, confident, secure, empowered, enough, a temple, strong, purposed, and a worshiper. Y'all, that is who you are in Christ. That is your identity. You are not who your family or your friends say you are. You are not who the government says you are. Listen, you can't even pick who you are because God created you to be what he has purposed for you. God created you to be his child, not some whatever the stuff that this world tries to claim is real that isn't. You were already given an identity and a purpose, and the Holy Spirit guides us in that. He renews us, and he lives in us. And when the Holy Spirit is living in you, you can feel at peace when every, with everything. When everything feels conflicting, you can feel at peace. You can feel strong even when the world says you are weak. You can know that you are chosen and anointed even when you feel incapable and unable. Point number three is that the Holy Spirit is the source. Now, the, the big idea statement that we read earlier says that he is the source of power, assurance, strength, wisdom, and gifting. In Acts 1.8, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Power for what? The scripture tells you, I'm going to read it here in a second, but I'll explain it real quick. We as believers, as Christians, as followers of Christ, were given a commission or a mission, so to speak, or a duty, a job, to tell people about Jesus, to spread it through the world. So it says, and and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the the earth. So in other words, in your community, in your city, your state, your nation, and around the world. You have the power through the Holy Spirit to be a witness and to share the love of Jesus with everyone. 
Look, I love talking to new believers that are super on fire for God. The ones that are like, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. I'm going to find a way to talk about my Jesus and how good he is and what he's done in my life. I love talking to those people. It's so exciting. There's a group of guys that, that I get together with every couple of weeks. And uh, we, we were reading through a book together. And we're, you know, it's a bunch of men. And we're sitting there talking about our insecurities and stuff, which never happens. We don't talk, you know, usually. Men don't tell each other about what problems they're going through, right? We, we just grunt and move, move on. <laughs> we, I remember a time when I, I picked up a buddy, one of my best friends in Texas. I had a small boat back when I lived in there in, in Texas. And picked him up, and we drove to the lake. It was about 25 minutes. And I think we only said two or three sentences the whole, t- the whole drive. It was great. And we were like, hey, where do you want to launch from? We're going to go to Morgan's Point. All right, cool. What are you fishing with? Lures, artificial. All right. That was the whole day. (laughs) We didn't talk while we were fishing. We didn't talk when we were headed back. He's still a best friend to this day. I mean, I talk to him a couple times a year, but that's real brief too. Still love and trust each other. But there's this guy in this group that is, I I don't know how long he's been saved exactly, but, but he is always so encouraging, always, even if he's had a long day at work, I mean, he's always joyful. He's fully embraced allowing the Holy Spirit to control his life and give him power to be a bold witness through all of his words and all of his actions, and I love it. Acts 2.2 says, and we read this earlier, that the Spirit came as a rushing wind. You know, wind is powerful. Wind is really powerful. If, you, if you've ever been to Colleen, Texas, you'll, I mean, there's been times where, I, you know, 200 pounds or more, I've been... Uh, like this, leaning into the wind and at a 45 degree angle and just letting the wind hold me up. It's, it's that strong. And we use what? We, we use fans to create wind when it feels like this disgusting, whatever it is outside, hot and humid. We use fans to cool us down, right? But wind can also be powerful in a, in a devastating way. Wind, wind can knock down trees when it comes as a tornado or a hurricane. It can knock down buildings, power lines, all kinds of stuff. Wind is powerful. You know what happens whenever you speak? Have you ever put your hand up over your mouth and felt your own breath whenever you speak? Or maybe you were standing uh, really close to that one guy that always gets too close. You weren't standing close. He got too close, right? He's talking to you. You can feel his hot breath on your face. That, when you speak, you create lungs from your, uh, you create lungs. You create air from your lungs that comes out of your mouth. The same thing happens when God speaks. When God spoke, what do we read in Genesis? He created light, mountains, stars, the earth. I mean, he created the heavens. He created all kinds of stuff with his breath, with his words. Whenever he speaks, the same thing happens. He creates a breath, a word, a a wind. When Jesus spoke, his words had power too. I mean, what happened when he spoke? He did the same thing. He was human. From his lungs, the air came out. The words came out. He healed He calmed the storms with his words, right? He raised a man from the dead. Same exact thing. He created wind from his lungs. My wife and I became foster parents. We finished the classes uh, last year, and we've had a few places. We've had three placements now. Um, In January, we took in our first. So we became, from a family of three, we became a family of four. And then we went back to a family of three for one day, and then accepted two uh, younger babies into our house. So now we went to a family of five. We're actually about, we're waiting on a, a 13 day old, he's 13 days old today, uh, to come into our care to make us a family of six. So we're gonna be looking for a minivan. Um, that's the only way. And so, but we went to a family of six. And, and I remember when they called me about this little boy uh, who happens to be their sibling. So it just works out really wonderfully. Um, he was born prematurely, and, you know, at, like I said, he's 13 days old now, but I can't, I, I just started to picture what happens when a baby boy is, or a baby is born. Now, I want to, I want to preface this by saying this. There is a, the word that is translated as spirit in the Bible, the word is pneuma, which means breath. And so I started to think about this baby being born, and, and you know, if you, if you read back on the word pneuma and you talk you not talk to but listen to scholars or read their their works and stuff some theologians you'll you'll find out that the, the correct spelling in how we would write it at least of Yahweh is Y H W H now those consonants what the theologians say is that they are the only consonants 
that do not allow your lips to touch or for you to use your tongue. And when I was thinking about this, I was like, okay, I started saying it, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. And I was like, okay. So then I learned that it was intentional because it's, it's meant to, to replicate, it's meant to imitate breath, the inhalation and the exhalation process, Yahweh. Just picture it for a second. Imagine breathing out and breathing in. Yahweh. Yahweh. That is what our breath is doing. Imagine the breath of a baby, firstborn, the first thing out of its mouth, the name of our God, Yahweh. The last thing that you will ever say on earth, whether you want to say it or not, is the name of our God, Yahweh. The Spirit. That's the pneuma, the spirit. You're speaking the name of God, calling on the Holy Spirit with every breath that you take. That's powerful right there. The spirit is powerful. Listen, every time we worship in this room together, you can feel God in this place. You can feel the spirit move every time. I promise you that because with every breath that we are breathing and singing and lifting him up because he's worthy, we're calling on his name every single time. Yahweh. Every, we end every service here by asking this question, what now, God? I want to say this to you. If you're a believer and you need to understand that the Holy Spirit lives in you, he's given each of you a gift. Not only is he there to guide you and to renew you and to be your source of power, strength, and understanding, he's given you a gift. First Corinthians 12 says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. And when you read on in that chapter, you read about, about gifts like administration and discernment and faith and hospitality and wisdom. And there's more on that list. And then even if you go back to the book of Romans, you see gifts like exhortation and giving and serving, leading. There's, there's more on that list as well. You may not know what your gift is right now. But the Spirit has given you that gift. And I'll tell you this. You may not feel equipped that doesn't matter because you're called. You know, on Monday night, I was with this team. Actually, that's right back there. They're going to come up here on the stage in a second. We're headed to Nicaragua on Tuesday morning. It's funny because uh, one of the girls keeps saying we're leaving Monday night because it's going to be dark out when we go to the airport. I'm like, you got a point. We're leaving Tuesday, but you got a point. It's technically Monday night, I guess. But she on Monday, she had made a statement kind of in, as a joking response to someone else's comment. And she had reminded me of a quote that I've heard thousands, probably a thousand times or more. And it's that God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. I mean, think about the story of Moses. Moses was called, right, over and over again. And he fought God on this. He was like, I can't do that. I can't even talk straight. Like, I'm not doing that, God. God said, don't worry, I, I called you. And what happened when he obeyed? He delivered Church, God has called you for a purpose. That purpose isn't what you had in mind, probably. But he's given you a gift to use for his purpose. You might be thinking, what am I supposed to do? Well, as the Holy Spirit guides you, seek, trust, and follow his direction. You have to be careful, though. Make sure that if you feel like you're being called to a certain thing or directed a certain way, make sure you pray about it. Make sure that it is the Holy Spirit, not what the world has used as manipulation. And then as he renews and indwells you, grow in intimacy with him by spending more time with him, by worshiping him, by praying, things like that. And then as he is your source, use your gifts, the gifts that he has given you to spread the love of Jesus with everyone that you come in contact with. Amen. Let's pray and we're going to have our mission team come up. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you so much. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would fill us up with your spirit that every day that we would renew our minds in you that we would come to know you more and more and more god we love you we're so thankful for you god i pray lord that you would use each of us in our gifts and for anyone that's in this room that does not know you god i pray lord that you would give them the boldness to come and find us today so we can pray with them so they can be filled with your spirit in jesus name we pray amen and amen wow we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in the message today Please know that we as a church are praying that what you have learned today and the truths that God has put deep into your heart will manifest and grow into something amazing. You can experience that with other believers at ACC on Sunday mornings at 710 Aqua Heart Road. 
And remember, you belong at ACC.